So we're going to talk about angles. But before we do, I want to introduce you to a concept and a symbol that we're going to be using quite a bit. And it's the concept. In geometry, we don't say two angles are equal or two the lengths of two sides are equal. We say that, for example, triangles, certain shapes, or angles are congruent. Have you ever heard this word congruent? The word is congruent. Write it down, please. Congruent. And congruent, the word congruent means the same size as. And it has a special symbol. I'll put it in parentheses. It's like an equal sign, so you would make an equal sign like you normally do. But then you put this tilde on top of it. So whenever two shapes or two angles or two sides of a, of a shape are the same size, we use the symbol and we say they're congruent. OK? All right. Any questions? So we're going to see this word congruent quite a bit here. So we're going to take a quick review of the things we should know already about angles. Uh, and so let's begin. So classifying angles. So how do you classify angles? Angles, <clears throat> angles are classified according to their measurement. Angles are measured in degrees. The symbol, that little circle there for degree, like in temperature, stands for degrees. You can write the measure of an angle using the notation such as this little m angle t equals 40 degrees. The equation, that equation there is read, the measure of angle t equals 40 degrees. So this little lowercase m in italics, that's the measurement of angle T. We use that symbol for angles T is 40 degrees. Okay. Uh, in fact, let me go ahead and highlight this because that's important. Okay. So if two angles have an equal measure, they are congruent. That's important. So we usually say that angles are congruent when they're equal in size. So for example, the measurement of angle R equals 40 degrees and the measurement of angle S equals 40 degrees. Then the measurement of, then R, angle R is congruent to angle S. All right. Any questions there? All right. So let's, Take a trip down memory lane. You probably have run across these ideas about angles. So um, so first of all, let's talk about angles real quick before we talk about acute angles. So angles are um, formed by two rays. Okay, are you guys familiar with a ray? If I just cover up this one here, this would be ray ML. Okay, ray ML. Why don't you sit in the back? What did I do? I, so we have those two common rays, uh, those two common points joined by this ray. And in a little bit, we're going to be naming angles. And it's important to identify which is the vertex and what are the rays, okay? So let's get into the, the topic here. Let's talk about these angles. Do you guys remember acute angles? What's unique about acute angles? <laughs> it's actually a good name for it because, well, technically it's between zero and 90. So acute is a good name because they're small and tiny. They're cute little angles. Um, 
So they're more than zero, but less than 90 degrees. That's what makes an angle acute, okay? So basically, there are certain important angle measurements that we look at, um, zero, 90, and 180. And we're gonna look at all of those now, okay? So that's an acute angle. Then we have a right angle. Do you guys remember right angles? Yeah. <laughs> They're exactly 90 degrees, okay? And they, you're gonna often see this little box. Whenever you see that little box, it's an indication you're looking at a right angle, so it's 90 degrees, okay? Um, next, we have an obtuse angle. Obtuse, always think of large, okay? Because it's more than 90, but less than 180. Okay. It's more than 90, but less than 180. So if you look at this measurement here, it's within that range. More than 90, but less than 180. Okay. Um, and then we have what's called a straight angle. A straight angle measures exactly... 180. Yes. Yeah, it forms a straight line. It forms a straight line. So it's exactly 180. So it says there, straight angles are formed by rays that lie on a line. So they look like just a, a line, okay? So hopefully, do, does that sound familiar? You guys learned that in the previous, okay. How about complementary and supplementary? Do you remember those? Yeah. Well, let's talk about those. I think that's the part that might have not been covered or just um, covered real quickly. So we have two types of measurements and uh, pairs of angles that we want to look up to. Um, when angles are complementary, it's two or more angles that add up to 90 degrees. They add up to 90 degrees. Okay. Um, so that means we could put a little box there because the two add up to that amount. So if you look, we have 58 de a 58 degree angle and a 32 degree angle. And if we add up those amounts, it's 90 degrees. Okay, they add up to 90 degrees. So complementary, think of 90. Supplementary are two or more angles that add up to 180. So is it just with these masses? Yes. We'll, we'll be using it in a little bit. So two angles are supplementary if the sum of the their measure is 180. So here we have these two angles, right? And if you combine them by adding, let's see, we got 139 degrees plus 41 degrees, 180. And as you can see, the two angles together, do you see they make a straight line there? Yeah, that's a that's pretty much a giveaway that you have um, this. Sometimes they call this in geometry when two two or more angles form a straight line, a linear pair. That's another way of saying two things, two or more things that add up to one eighty. Um, but the ones we're going to mainly be using are complementary and supplementary. 
So a little word association helps us remember which one is which. So would you agree that the C in complementary comes before the S in supplementary, right? 90 comes before 180. So the way I think of it, because sometimes you're like, okay, complementary is up to the one that's 90 or 180. Well, the, the other possibility is supplementary, and that comes later. So C goes with 90, S goes with 180. It's a little word association that helps us remember which one goes with which. All right. Any questions? So let's practice. I'm going to flip this over, and we're going to start with naming angles. We're going to be naming these angles because naming angles is sometimes confusing. Sometimes we can name angles with just one letter. Okay, if I can name an angle sometimes with just one letter. So say I want angle J. Angle J. What, which one's angle J? This one? Well, yeah, it has J in the vertex, so that this one could be J, but the problem is this other one could be J as well, or the big angle formed by the two smaller angles could be angle J. You see the problem there? So often we have to name these by naming an angle with three points or three letters. So we're gonna practice that. Um, so the imp important way to do this is identify the ray, the rays that make up that angle. So we have this ray Ji. You see this ray right here? We want to name this angle in particular, this angle that has a shading. So let's identify the rays that make that up. We have ray Ji. So to name a ray, we do this little half arrow thing. And underneath, we write the points that make it up, the vertex point, then the end point. So we got Ji, or that's Ji. And what would be the other ray that makes up that angle? This one here. How would we name that one? Jh. So these are the two rays that make up that angle. Now, if we want to name this angle, it says name the marked angle in two different ways. We can't call it angle J because it's too confusing. We don't know which one we're talking about. The main thing you want to do is make sure you have the vertex as the middle letter. Let me write that over here. Um, make sure... the vertex I always love that letter I mean that word vertex is the middle letter so for example Let's name this angle. We use the angle symbol. Then a combination of th those three letters that make up the, the, the angle. But the letter in the middle has to be the vertex. So I can't put J at the beginning or the end. It has to be in the middle. And then I could say I, J, H. And that way we know for sure we're talking about this angle. So IJH is one possible name for that angle. And then there's a second possible name. What's the other possible name we can give that? Yeah, reverse the H and the I. HJI. HJI. Either way, we're talking about the same angle. The main thing is you got to have the vertex as the middle letter. Okay. 
So let's name this other angle. We want this angle with the vertex, vertex H. And again, we have a few possible answers, so we can't just call it angle H. But let's name it with three points. Making sure H is the middle one. What's one possibility? We want to name this angle here. FHG. Right. H, the vertex has to be in the middle. Or what's the second possibility? GH, G, H, and what's the letter? F. G, H, F. You have to include both rays in there. And H has to be the middle one. So one of the assignments you're going to have, you're going to be given various shapes and situations where you have to name a particular angle with three points. Any questions? OK. Let's move on then. So now we're going to use that complementary, supplementary, and we're also going to um, talk about something called vertical angles. OK. So we're going to find the mis missing measure in the angle. So in each of these situations, we have one or more angles that we have to figure out the missing measurement. So what we do is we use our knowledge of geometry and angles and figure out what the missing side is or the missing angle. So let's take a look at this first situation. They give us these two angles. One is 31 degrees. One is A. We don't know that one. That's the one we have to figure out. But we do have a little bit of information. They did draw this little square. Uh, what is that square telling us? It's a right angle. It's a right angle. By the way, that's a measure. Whenever I don't want to say angle, I just, mathematicians usually put the little angle symbol. We got a right angle going on. So if we have a right angle, that implies it's a complementary situation. So how much do they have to, both angles have to add up to? 90. So basically 31 plus A has to equal 90 degrees. Well, now it's just a very simple algebra problem if you want to solve it that way. Let's solve it and figure out what A is. Take away 31 from both sides. And we'll get our answer for A. A has to be 31. I'm sorry, 90 take away 31. Can we just do the simple subtraction of 31 sure. plus 31? Sure. Of course. So it's, A is 59 degrees. All right. Any questions? Okay. I'm going to jump over to the last one, then, then we'll come back to the middle one. Okay. So, you guys ready? Let's go to this one. Uh, the one, reason I want to go to this one is it kind of works well for what we already know. Uh, if we look at um, the this pair of these two angles here, Together, they make one of those straight angles, right? How much do they add up to? 180. 180. So this is a situation where we have supplementary angles. Okay. So before they added up to 90, 
we had complementary angles. Now we have supplementary angles. So if I add these two together, 29 plus A, what do they total up to be? Remember, supplementary angles add up to how much? 180. So these two angles, they make a straight line, a straight angle, linear pair, supplementary, all those different ways of saying 180 degrees. Yeah. Like Carlos said, all you just a simple subtraction. I'll show it as an equation. A is 151 degrees. So we're taking little bits of knowledge that we know about the angle measurements to figure out the missing sides. Okay. All right. Uh, let's do the middle one because in the middle one where we have to figure out two different angle measurements, B and C. Okay. You guys ready? All right. So let's see here. We got these two lines intersecting. We have this one that's 102. I'm going to draw your attention to the following. Take a look at this. We have... Um, these two angles here, do you see them now? What do they add up to? 180 again. Yeah, if you ignore this one, this part, that makes a linear pair. It's 180 degrees. So for the first part, I could say we got supplementary again going on. And so we would say something like 102 plus C, or B rather, equals 180. Okay. Um, so let's get rid of 102, subtract it. And that would give us B. Seventy-eight degrees. Okay. Seventy-eight degrees. Now, we want to figure out C. How can we do that? I'm going to show you. There's a couple of ways. Um, hmm? Well, we could say this is 78, right? We could do we could do 180, take away 78, which is 102. But look, this is 102. There's a quicker way to figure that one out. Look at these two angles that I'm pointing out there. When two angles face each, when two lines cross, intersect, and they face each other like the, these are, they're facing each other, they're called vertical angles. These are vertical angles. I'm going to write it over here, vertical angles. And the cool thing about vertical angles are congruent. They're the same size. Vertical angles are congruent. So if one of them is 102 degrees, this one, angle B or B has to be also 102, or C rather. So the quickest way is if you know the measurement of one of those two vertical angles, the other angle has to be the same size. So 
So I, we could have done angle C first, but I, I knew we didn't know about vertical angles yet. So I didn't want to roll that out. And um, from now on, if you see two angles facing each other, just say, ah, they're vertical. So they have to be the same size. The other one's the same. Okay. Any questions? Also, you see opposite sides? Mm -hmm. And they're equal in size. So this other angle across from B is the same size as B. So that one would be 78. Oh. And the cool thing is 102 plus 78 plus 102 plus 78 equals 360. All the way around. Do the math. You'll see it works. What about others that don't have the other side? Um, okay, we'll get to number one. Let's talk about the other side. You guys ready? So we're just going to kind of amp this up a little bit more. We got three more examples to do. We're going to find the missing side, but we're going to still use complementary, supplementary vertical angles to figure these out. Okay. So let's take a look at number one. Number one. These two, two angles, the two lines don't completely intersect, right? But they do form a right angle. So these two angles that we're trying to figure out, to use to figure out why with, what do they add up to? 180. This is a complementary situation. I'm sorry, yeah, they, they add up to 90. Complementary, they add up to 90. So um, I can make come up with the equation. Well, we take 9y plus 5. Plus the other one, which is 58. The other angle is 58. That has to equal 90 degrees. Okay. And now we're just solving this like we would any other equation. Combine your like terms. So I have 5 plus 58. That's what, 63? 9y plus 63, if I combine these, equals 90. Let's subtract the 63. And we get 9y equals 90, take away 63, that's 27. And divide out the 9. We get 27 divided by 9, three. which is 3. And then that. Just 3. Just plain old three. So there you go. Our first answer is that y equals three. Any question? Okay. So in the next one, we have to solve for r, figure out what r is. And let's take a look at um, this particular situation. These two angles together add up to how much? 180. They're supplementary. So now we're looking at a supplementary situation. Uh, vertical is when they're facing each other. So if we, if we were looking at something over here where my pen is, or here, these two would be vertical. They have to be across from each other. This one's supplementary. Yeah, if you can, with your pencil, draw this and make a straight line, you got 180 degrees. So basically, adding these two up makes 180. So we have 8R plus 5 plus 5R plus 6 is 180 degrees. And it's just an equation now with some variables and constants to combine. So I can add 8R and 5R. 
Let's see, that gives us 13R plus I can add up 5 and 6, that's 11, equals 180. Does it matter which, which ones we add first, like the ones with variables? The ones that no. Have... You're still going to simplify it down to a two-step equation. And I'll get rid of the 11. This does have to be done in this order. I do have to get rid of the constant first here. Equals 169. And luckily 13 does go into that. 13 times. So the answer here is R equals 13. So supplementary angles help us figure out that one. All right, we got one more. You guys ready? Take a look at this one. Here we have this angle across from this angle. What situation do we have here? This one is vertical. So we have some vertical angles going on here. Vertical angles are congruent. So this angle measurement equals that angle measurement. 9R, take away 7 equals 8R plus 6. Because the angle measurements have to be equal. And we just have a ver uh, an equation with variables on both sides. So let's get rid of 8R. Subtract the 8R on both sides. Cancel the 8R on the right side. 9 take away 8 is 1. 1R one is just R, so I'm just going to write it as R. Equals 6. And I'll get rid of that minus 7. So R equals... What is that, 13? Again, what are the chances? Okay, but this time we got that from vertical angles. Okay. Any questions? Today's assignment on uh, Delta has all of these skills.